Hi, I want to talk to you about delta G at non-standard conditions, meaning we're not at one bar, we're not at one ATM, and that, um, or sorry, one bar, uh, 25 degrees C, or um, or one ATM, yeah, uh, that we're not at any of those. Um, so, I'm at non-standard conditions, we have a formula, delta G, notice what's missing from that, the not, is saying, hey, you're not at, at standard conditions. Um, so this equals delta G, our Gibbs free energy at standard conditions, that's the not. So if I were, for this particular chemical reaction at standard conditions, here's the value of delta G, plus RT times the natural log of Q. So let's review everything really quick to make sure that you know what all of the symbols mean. Um, so again, without that not, that's just free energy at non-standard conditions. With that not, it is uh, the free energy at standard conditions. Um, let's see here. Oh, it was one molar. That's what I wanted to say. So one molar, um, the one ATM and the 25 degrees C. Um, and then over here are, we've got to be careful. The gas constant is 8.314 joules divided by mole times Kelvin is joule because we're dealing with energy. Um, temperature of course has to be in Kelvin. Natural log of Q. Now Q is just the ratio of products over reactants at some snapshot. This reaction is going to happen and we're wondering at this moment what's the ratio of products and reactants. K, um, our equilibrium expression, that's really special. That is when we are at perfect equal rates where the forward and reverse rate are equal to each other, what's the ratio of products compared to reactants? Um, so this is at some moment. And notice I put at some point, and it's not necessarily an equilibrium. We're taking a measurement of the amount of reactants and products, and we're going to compare that to K. All right, so with that, if Q equals K, that means that we're at equilibrium. So if the ratio of products of reactants equals K, Q equals K, boom, great, we're at equilibrium. Um, but we could have two other situations. Let's say that Q is bigger than K. And so I want you to think this out, just basic math. Remember, products over reactants. If Q is larger, it means that we must have more of the numerator, more products. I've got more products than reactants. If I have more products, it means that we've overshot equilibrium. We've gone past equilibrium. Um, so what's going to happen, I have too many products, is going to go in the reverse direction to reach equilibrium. That is not spontaneous. That's not spontaneous. We've went beyond, we made too many products, too many products, um, so non-spontaneous. Now, if Q is less than K, again, let's just do some simple um, math, thinking about this, products over reactants, if Q is less than K, that means that we must have more reactants, more reactants and products than what we have at equilibrium. That means that this will shift forward. It will go forward to make more products, and that, is spontaneous. Moving in the forward direction is going to be spontaneous. Why? So we reach an equilibrium. Everything in nature will drive toward equilibrium. So it reaches equilibrium. That's spontaneous and it simply means, hey, you haven't reached equilibrium yet. It's going to continue in that forward direction. Now, I did want to remind you, um, when you're finding Q, that's simply taking products of reactants. So um, I wrote down just our, our generic equation, little a plus, um, or little a times big A plus little b times big B in equilibrium with little c times big C plus little d times big D. Now notice products, C and D, and the coefficients, little c, little d, become the exponents divided by reactants, and same thing, their coefficients become the exponents. So if you're given at some moment, you take the concentrations they give you, and you plug it in just like you would K, the equilibrium expression. So you plug that in uh, right there, and then you can do all the math to see what the delta G value is, the amount of energy, gives free energy at non-standard conditions, non-standard conditions. Um, and sorry about the confusion at the beginning. Um, let me write it down for you. Standard conditions, again, is going to be one molar if you've got a concentration. Uh, so if you're not at one molar, you're not at standard conditions. Uh, one molar, 25 degrees C, one bar. Okay, and one bar is really close to one ATM, but it's one bar. Okay, there you have it. Have a really good day. If you have more questions on 
free energy, take a look at the playlist that says entropy and free energy. All right, thank you.